Can you integrate the power of ChatGPT into your own Arduino projects? And I'm not talking about using ChatGPT to help you write your code. I mean incorporating the actual textual responses that you get from ChatGPT to do something in your project. The answer is a bold yes. Now, what it looks like is going to depend a lot on what you're really trying to achieve. In this exploratory project, what you're going to do is interface an Arduino compatible wireless ESP32 with the OpenAI API and create a standalone, eh, retro ish looking chat GPT terminal that's going to use a keyboard as the input device and an OLED as the display. Before we dive in, I want you to know that you can get all the code for this project and a bill of materials at a link in the description. So please make sure to check out that link if you want to build this yourself. So why are we building a chat GPT terminal? The truth is millions, if not billions of dollars is going to be generated by embedding intelligence into hardware devices. There is an enormous financial incentive right now for pushing AI to the edge, to actual physical things. But how this all plays out really remains to be seen. And what ends up actually being useful in solving problems that people are willing to pay for, I think is anybody's guess. So what is starting to happen on a huge scale at this very moment is the prototyping of AI edge applications. Because I feel like we all see the hint of this immense usefulness in these large language models like ChatGPT, but how can we actually bring that intelligence to bear in the physical world? So if you want to get started with these AI edge applications, you need something that's going to help you get up and running as fast as possible. Now, this ChatGPT terminal project can really be your first stab in the dark, because again, we're just trying things at this point. And what better way is there to try things fast and cheap than using the Arduino ecosystem? There's tons of developers, lots of inexpensive, interoperable hardware, and arguably the most extensive open source code base for working with external hardware. Arduino is really a prototyper's dream. Plus, it's not that hard to work with compared to a lot of other options. So even if you're a novice programmer, you can get up and running pretty darn quickly, especially if you invest in some good training. So here's a quick outline of this project. It's a simple chat GPT terminal. So what you do is you type your chat out on an old school keyboard. You use an Arduino compatible ESP32 that records your key presses and then sends a post request to the OpenAI API. When the response comes back, you simply show the text on an OLED and then repeat that process over and over. It's pretty straightforward. You know, you're chatting with ChatGPT. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, why didn't you make this voice to text input and text to audio output, you know, like a mini Alexa? And I can assure you that this is something I considered and something I plan to explore more for sure. There's no consequence to put an artificial intelligence in everything. Just trust me. But this project is more of an exploration of interfacing the ChatGPT API than trying to figure out how to make something that understands me better than Alexa. Did you want fries with that lame excuse? Now there's three major components that you're gonna need to build this project. First is a microcontroller development board. Then you're gonna need a PS2 style keyboard and an OLED display. So the microcontroller development board I used for this project was the Feather S2 ESP32 by Unexpected Maker. The ESP32 is a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled microcontroller and they have tons of different great development boards for them. Now you don't need this exact model to run this code. In fact, I think an, any ESP8266 would even work, but I've really grown to love the uh, unexpected maker dev boards. I think they're pretty darn handy. Now you're also gonna need a PS2 style keyboard. These are old school keyboards. They have that like outdated connector type. The reason I went with this old style keyboard is because there's several different libraries available that make reading key presses pretty darn easy. The keyboard actually turned out to be an easy way to get text input into the microcontroller that could easily be parsed. Plus, when you set a keyboard out, everybody kind of knows how to use one. So if it's laying out, people assume they can type in it. So you can't use a USB keyboard. You have to get one of these old school ones. You can usually pick them up at Goodwill for like nothing. Finally, you're gonna need a display to show off the text. I went with an OLED 
that has stunning eight kilopixel resolution. It's insane. Okay, so maybe it's not like, you know, the highest resolution screen you can dream up, but these 128 by 64 pixel displays are pretty much everywhere. Now, I played around with a bunch of different display sizes. I went with a really small display is what I started with. Then I went with a medium one and I ended up going with the larger displays. The bigger the display you get, the more expensive it tends to be. So it just kind of matters what your use case might be. And just as a reminder, if you check the description, there's a link where you can get the bill of materials for this. And I've got, you know, different examples of suppliers you might be able to get this stuff from. Now, I wanted to add just a little bit of pizzazz to this project other than having it on, you know, like a breadboard. So I made a faceplate for the project using a Monport laser. It's a 40 watt like desktop laser engraver. And I used it to cut it a couple sheets of bamboo. Now, this is the first time I've used a laser for a project. It was pretty fun to do, I must say. But just getting up and running with this laser was easy. It came super packaged well, pretty much fully assembled. I just pulled it out and I installed this software called Lightburn. It's a software for operating laser engravers. If you want to check out the laser that I used for my enclosure here, you can check out the description for a link. Now, wiring up the connections for this is pretty easy. There's not too much to connect up. Basically, what you need to do is connect two things to your ESP32 dev board. One is a USB adapter that goes from USB to PS2, and the other is your OLED display. Now, if you're using an OLED display that's using SPI versus I2C, the wiring will be a little different than what's shown here. But in the code, it's just a one-line change. You just comment out one line, change it with another and uh, it's just a couple more connections to get it set up with an SPI OLED. Some OLEDs you get can support both SPI or I2C. And if you're wondering like, what the heck am I saying? Those are just different ways of talking to the OLED from the microcontroller. They're just different serial communication protocols and some OLEDs support one or the other, some support both. And again, if you check out the description, it'll take you to a link where it will talk a little bit more specifically about these connections that you need to make. So now kind of switching gears here, talking a little bit about the code. First, I wanna talk a little bit about the code flow. It's really not too complicated. Basically, the system is always waiting for keyboard input. And if the keyboard input is part of a chat message, then it saves it into a special messages array. But if it's a command key, like let's say somebody press shift or enter, then what it does is take the appropriate action. So once a user submits a message by pressing the enter key, then an API call is made to the ChatGPT API to get a response. The response is then parsed by the code and the pertinent information is saved in the messages array. Finally, the message is displayed on the OLED one word at a time. I was trying to mimic the uh, web ChatGPT terminal interface. And then the user can press up and down arrows if they want to scroll through the response. So that's pretty much a full cycle. You read key presses, you hit the API, and then you display the response. And you just do that over and over, and that's essentially the chat. Now there's also a way to inject a system message. And if you're not sure what a system message is, we'll put a link in the description below because we have a video that talks about the chat GPT API and explains the different roles that there are. But basically, the system message is a way to help steer the response from ChatGPT. So it might be something like, respond like a pirate. In fact, respond like a pirate is the default system message that I have in here. But again, to change it, all you do is press the escape key, enter a new system message, and you're off to the races. In order to link up this code with your Wi-Fi and OpenAI API secret key, you'll need to make changes in the credentials.h file. So you'll just have to change the SSID, which is like, you know, your Wi-Fi network name. You'll have to change the password for your Wi-Fi password. And then you'll just have to get an OpenAI private key. And if you're wondering, hey, how can I get a ChatGPT OpenAI developer private key? Well, we've got a video covering that as well. We'll link to it in the description, super easy. And they even let me have one. So that probably means they'll let you have one too. Now the full code for this project is available at a link in the description, along with some other resources. The major libraries that are used are the Wi-Fi library, that's for connecting the ESP32 to the internet, the Wi-Fi client secure library for making a secure connection to the OpenAI server, the universal 8-bit graphics 2 library, 
for working with the OLED. And then I'm using Arduino JSON for handling JSON formatting and the API calls. We're also using the PS2 Key Advanced for handling keyboard input and the PS2 Key Map for handling kind of some more finer details of that keyboard input. So again, everything you need is right down in the description to get you started building your own project here. Now, if you don't have your ChatGPT API key yet, check out this video right here. It is gonna show you exactly how to get your API key. It's gonna take you all of like, I don't know, a couple minutes. In fact, it'll even show you how to test your API key with a software called Postman, which is gonna be super useful in understanding how the code works. So just follow the instructions here, super easy, sign up, get your key, and then start building this terminal.